Oh, brother. Yeah, it's one of these. I hate brother machines. Well, this one came in for sir. No, I'm kidding. Uh, this is a brother MFC 7220. Probably harks back from the days of Windows XP, as there certainly are Windows XP drivers. Allegedly, it is Energy Star, <laughs> which, as you'll see, is nothing short of a lie. And, of course, it has all these stupid plastic fucking things everywhere in the way. I didn't open this one. we got to open that, too. And then that little panel opens. And, yeah, that that's... That's that. That's great. That that's not a design issue at all. Yeah. What is this monstrosity? This is a printer, scanner, copier, fax, black and white laser. Let's. It's stupid. It's bulky. It's big. It's ugly. It probably has yellowed. This is in as-found condition. You can see all the dirt and everything on it. Uh, my dad got this thing from a neighbor. Don't forget to call the Chatzala! Got it from a neighbor. Uh, allegedly it works and there's nothing wrong with it. I have turned it on. But I haven't done anything with it because it doesn't really let you do anything with it. Like, I wasn't able to find through the menu, which is very difficult because all you get is an LCD character display of 16 characters, and that's it. And not to mention, the angle is kind of hard to read. You can't even adjust the contrast on it, at least that I found through the menu. Uh, it's just obtrusive, this thing. There's your handset. I don't know if it ever had a rubber plug in there. If it did, it's gone. Otherwise, it's just a piece of crap little thing. It's... Oh, it is actually... You can replace the cord. So that's good. Dirt in there. And that's it. So, we're going to test this thing out. But something to note is, like I said, that this becomes... Uh, this comes back from the Windows XP days. Parallel was still around. So we're going to try this parallel and USB just for fun. The power cord is permanently attached, although they do give you a very long wire. There's even It even came with dirt on it. That's nice. So uh, I don't know if it prints or if it actually works, but we're going to find that out. Um, I'm going to turn it back around, get everything set up, and we'll power it on. And then we'll talk about the computer I'm going to use. So here's a watt meter. It's plugged in. This does have a hard power on off switch. In other words, a mains switch. So when it's off, at least, it's totally, completely off. So that's nice. So we'll go ahead and power it up. And we're just going to watch the watt meter because the machine does nothing of interest. Now we're going to see some things. I don't know if you saw the lights blink. Over a thousand watts. This is completely normal being that this is a laser printer. It has a fuel fuser roller that it has to heat up, which it's doing now. Gets everything all set. And it goes down to low power mode, which they claim is around 10 watts. It's reading 5.5. That's certainly reasonable, but keep watching. Oops, what happened there? <laughs> That's right, it keeps the fuser lit up at all times. So there's a thermostat, I wish I could speak today, there's a thermostat on it. And every once and again, while it's turned on, the lights are going to blink, and it's going to pull a thousand watts just out of nowhere. It'll do it again as I keep waiting here eventually. I don't know when. There it is. And that's that. So, I don't want the lights blinking all day. That's stupid. So you have to keep this thing off. They couldn't have set it up to just shut the fuck down. You know, use like 5 watts, 5.5 watts that it reads. 
So I already hate this machine. I used to sell these machines at Tiny Middle. They sucked. They were garbage. They were always garbage. Jordan Yu on YouTube swears by Brother Printers because, oh my god, the toner lasts so long. Well, <laughs> there's an issue with that too. So looking in here, I've never opened this before. There's some dirt. Let me get rid of that before it goes in the machine. There we are. This black thing is the toner cartridge. That gray part stays behind. That's the imaging drum. Eventually, that drum wears out. And when it wears out, it's expensive. And for a printer of this age, if that thing wears out, you just junk the printer. I did get this, however, with two new toner cartridges. They are not Brother branded cartridges. Rather, they're refilled cartridges from some unknown seller somewhere. I used to be a fan of getting the actual stuff. It's a Brother printer, you get the Brother cartridges. Or it's an HP printer, you get the HP cartridges. Designed together to work together. That is all true, and it holds true in many facets. The problem is today, ink and toner has gotten so outrageously expensive, I don't even give a shit where you get it from. Get it from as cheap as you can get it, because they've gone out of control as far as the actual name brand stuff. So let's go ahead and move the phone cord out of the way. There's the light blink again. It lights up again. It says, please wait. It makes stupid noises. It says, toner low. That's a great sign. <laughs> That's a great sign. But here's the other issue. I don't know if you can hear it. Forget the t -t -t -t. Do you hear the fan running? All the time, that's going to be running. So you have to turn this damn thing off at all times. I hate this thing. But hey, if it could fire off a page every now and again, I'm not complaining. So let's take a look with the lights blinking uh, at the machine I'm going to use to drive this. This is an old Dell laptop that I believe has Windows XP on it. Ex-co-worker at Tiny Middle gave this to me. Uh, it's very old. It's a latitude. Everybody who had a latitude had an attitude. I wanted you to know that. That's not just funny because it rhymes. It's actually true. Anybody with a latitude had an attitude. Uh, it's otherwise in good shape. All the keys are there. It doesn't see much use besides some dirt and whatnot. And this made a cameo appearance in a video I did, uh, oh, three or four years ago with Sharky626 making the buffalo chicken dip. And um, I had actually brought this and we played the uh, shoutcast off of that. So that was great. Now, I haven't powered this thing up probably since then. <laughs> the battery's long dead and that. So I have an adapter here. We'll see if we get it powered up. Okay, it's plugged in, and we actually have a green clean light, so that's a good sign. Hit the power button. Oh, it powers on. It posts. It's got a Centrino. Let's see if we could just take a look, because I don't even know what the specs on this thing are. Invalid CMOS time of day not set. That's good, so we actually have to go in here anyway. Pentium M 1.5 gigahertz. And it has 512 mega RAM. Yep, and a 14 inch screen. So let me reset the date and time, and we'll see if we can get this thing booted because it surely ain't 2004. It's now 16 years later, 2020, at the time of this recording. Let me just point out do you see how the center is dimmer than the rest? That's right, this is a cold cathode fluorescent backlit display. And being that this thing was stored, A, in a cold garage, B, has been sitting forever, and C, is ancient, uh, that's actually pretty normal. And after it's been on for a while, it will correct itself. Also, it's a 30-gig hard drive. Okay, first boot in I don't even know how long. Let's see if it still works. Post has completed. And Windows XP. Beautiful.
it's all there beautiful everything is just working that's fantabulous so let me get this set up I have the drivers which I'm gonna get um, but I wanted to test the printer USB and parallel uh, if this has USB 1 so let's see if the computer will tell us anything about that first or if I can make heads or tails out of what it does tell me I should say if I remember this crap after this long um, same specs right there we'll go to device mangler and the first thing I'll show you is the ports ECP printer port so that is the bi-directional high-end everything good stuff port so that'll give us like the fastest you can get and oh it is USB 2 so that's kind of a moot point well we're gonna try parallel hopefully the cable reaches and uh, we'll go from there I wanted to see if it worked on I know it would work on USB 1 but I want to see if there were lags because I calculated that roughly at USB 1 although you have 12 megabits per second uh, full throughput you can't achieve that and the way it divvies it up the maximum throughput you can ever achieve is 6 megabits per second which should calculate out to 150 kilobytes a second uh, the parallel port is going to be doing about two two and a half megabytes a second uh, it being an ECP port so um, I guess this is a little new for what I wanted but uh, anyway we've rambled on long enough let me get the drivers here and we'll try installing okay I'm just pushing that over the network here it should be here momentarily almost done uh, like I said I was going to try this USB and I even got a similarly vintage USB cable including the ferrite cores at both ends and this is modeled after the you know original iMac they had these sort of braided cables with the clear insulation but in true similar fashion they still had parallel cables and I'm using an honest to goodness interact cable I think that's upside down yeah with the blue clear blue you know transparent blue insulation on it and the uh, quote-unquote gold plated connectors this was like a $30 cable back in the day honking thumb screws yeah this is a quality cable but uh, they charged way too much